Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading session dated Monday the 16th of May. And I'm recording this video 9.30 in the evening New York time on Monday the 16th. This is our main wave count on the daily chart for the S&P and we're expecting further upwards movement before primary wave 2 zigzag is over. Within this zigzag, that an intermediate wave C is subdividing to a simple impulse with a 1, 2, a long extended third wave, 4, and working on a fifth wave. Within wave 5 blue, the third wave within it is probably unfolding as an extension. We have 1, 2, and within 3 pink, 1, 2. If we saw any further downwards movement, we were expecting it to find support at the lower edge of this parallel channel drawn here on the daily chart. Price is very, very close to the lower edge of this channel here. If we do see any further downwards movement before the third wave begins, it probably won't be by much. It will probably be just a tiny, tiny little bit to come to touch this channel before the wave 3 green starts. Any further downwards movement for wave 2 green technically may move right down to the start of wave 1 at 1294.7 but not below. However, in reality, we would not be expecting a trend channel breach while wave C black is still underway. That would indicate a trend change at primary degree and not just a second wave correction. And this fifth wave is an incomplete structure. No matter how we look at this wave 5 blue, it has to subdivide into a five wave structure. And so far, we only have one, two, three, four. We need at least one more upwards wave. I would not want to see wave 5 blue as over here, although this piece of movement is a zigzag and if it was an ending contracting diagonal each subwave would have to be a zigzag, but this doesn't really look like a zigzag and neither does this to be honest. It should have a very obvious overlapping three wave structure, not the straight up impulsive look like this. Furthermore, recent movement of the last few days is not at all what we would be expecting to see for primary wave 3 in terms of wave behaviour. So I expect we're going to initiate a middle of a third wave and see some strong upwards movement from the S&P this week. Our long held target remains the same. This is where wave C black will reach equality with A black and this is where wave 5 blue will reach equality with wave 3 blue. Primary 2 may not move beyond the start of primary 1 this wave count is invalidated with movement above 1576.09. Taking you to the first of our two hourly wave counts today, where the high for one and the low for two is this high here and this low down here. This main hourly wave count sees wave two green as a complete zigzag with an impulse for A, a zigzag for B, and an ending contracting diagonal for wave C orange. This piece of analysis here is different from yesterday's wave counts. I've had another good look at this piece of movement, particularly these downwards waves on 15 minute and 5 minute and for this last piece of movement on a 1 minute chart. At first glance this downwards piece of movement here looks like a 5 wave impulse on the hourly chart with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But when we look at this piece of movement on a 15 minute chart it has a very clear corrective count of 7. I expect it has an A, B, and then within C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I expect that's actually a correct count. This piece of movement here on the one minute chart has a corrective count, and this piece of movement is quite happily seen as a zigzag. So each and every subwave of an ending diagonal must subdivide into zigzags. We can see all of these waves here as zigzags. We have a very nice overshoot of the lower 1-3 trend line of this ending di contracting diagonal, which is exactly what we would expect to see for a contracting diagonal. It's highly likely that it was over here. As I said on the daily chart, if we do see any further downwards movement, it probably won't be very much at all. And for this wave count on the hourly chart, this contracting diagonal expects wave 5 purple should not be longer than equality with 3 purple. That will be a maximum length at 1323.27 so I certainly would not be expecting movement below that point if this wave count of this piece of analysis here is correct. We may consider this wave count confirmed with price movement above 1359.44 
because at that point that's where the alternate would be invalidated. At this stage, for the first time in a couple of weeks, I can have quite a lot of confidence in expecting that wave 2 green is finally over here. It's a big second wave correction. It's quite large in proportion to the first wave that it's correcting, and it's a lot larger than we would have expected. There's no ratio between C and A, but the structures are all correct, the subdivisions are all complete, we have nice alternation between A and impulse and C a diagonal. It certainly does look like it could be over here, and it's not truncated either. We have had a slightly new low. So what we should be expecting from the S&P this week is upwards movement. At 1450.94, wave 3 green will reach 1.618 the length of wave 1 green. This wave counts confirmed with movement above this price point because of this alternate. If we move the degree of labelling for this ending diagonal down one degree and see it as a leading contracting diagonal for a first wave within wave C orange, then we may be expecting correction up for two and further downwards movement. I have a big problem with this alternate in that it would expect pretty much a trend channel breach for the daily chart and we do not expect price to move out of that channel while the C wave impulse is still underway and I expect that we still need further upwards movement to satisfy these structures. The maximum limit for the next tiny little bit down if it start, opens and moves down straight away is exactly the same as the main hourly wave count. If we see a little bit of upwards movement and then new lows, then this wave count will make sense. We may expect a fairly quick end to wave C orange though, and very small short waves if it's not to have a big trend channel breach. Wave 2 may not move beyond the start of wave 1. This wave count is finally invalidated with movement above 1359.44, although it certainly has a very low probability. I'm expecting it's highly likely that tomorrow we should start with some more upwards movement for the S&P and it should continue to move upwards all week. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis and I hope that everyone else also had a fabulous weekend.